In the mid-1930s, the Netherlands Navy accepted it needed more cruisers and destroyers to deter the growing Japanese from moving on the East Indies. Unfortunately, while four destroyers were okay, the government didn't really like the idea of buying any more cruisers, it being the depression on top of everything else. Besides, the government believed in the event of war, the whole might of the British and American navies would stand by their side. So, to try to make new ships more palatable, the Navy pitched them as large destroyer flotilla leaders, even though historically that's what a light cruiser was. Of course, once this was okay, the design grew and grew until they evolved into real light cruisers. Admittedly, very light cruisers. Thus was started in 1936, the first of two 3,505-ton Tromp class. The biggest issue they had to overcome was financial restraint. If you hadn't noticed, the size of their cruisers are getting smaller and smaller with each class as opposed to the usual trend of bigger and bigger in other fleets. Being so small, they realistically could only do so much with them. Main armament could remain the same type as on the previous DeRoyter, but there simply wasn't the room for four turrets. As such, their design sacrificed the single mount, the catapult, could only carry one seaplane, and the second ship wasn't started until two years later, after the first was already finished. More on that coming up. On the upside, the design kept the three remaining turrets in a more traditional and useful arrangement. Also, someone figured out that if they were going to be destroyer leaders with a relatively light armament, they should probably carry torpedoes. In the event, the delay in starting the second ship, Hemskirk, so late meant while close, she wasn't finished when the Netherlands was overrun. As a result, she had to flee to England where she was completed as an anti-aircraft light cruiser using British weapons. All things considered, that was a good idea. It gave them a pretty good anti-aircraft cruiser rather than a subpar service combatant. Tromp was started January 17, 1936 and was completed August 18, 1938. Jakob van Hemskirk was started October 31, 1938, escaped to England May 10, 1940, and was completed there February 11, 1941. Tromp's main armament was six 150mm 55 caliber guns in three twin turrets, all in the center line, with two super firing forward and one aft. Hemskirk's main armament was five twin, four inch, 45 caliber, dual purpose mounts, two at the bow super firing, two midship with one on each beam where the torpedo tubes would have been, and one at the stern. Tromp had two 533 millimeter triple torpedo tubes, one on each side midship. Hemskirk had two depth charge racks for 12 depth charges. Tromp had four depth charge throwers. Protection was light. 16 millimeter belt armor stretched from turret one back to the steering gear. Inside of this, from turret one to turret three, was an anti-torpedo holding wall that was 30 millimeters aside the magazines, thinning to 20 millimeters aside the engineering. 30 millimeter bulkheads formed the end of the holding wall box. The armored deck roofed the holding walls and was 25 millimeters over the forward magazines and engineering, but thin to 16 millimeters over the aft magazine and steering gear. The barbettes had 25 millimeters and the conning tower had 12 millimeters. Propulsion was provided by four boilers venting to one large funnel. These provided steam to two turbines, each driving a propeller for 56,000 horsepower. Maximum speed was 33 knots. They had one rudder. Tromp could carry one float plane, but had no catapult or hangar. Henskirk was completed with types 79 and 272 radar and type 128 sonar. While under repair in March and April 1942, Tromp received two 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, more light and medium anti-aircraft, type 79 radar and type 128 sonar, while two of her depth charge throwers and the float plane were landed. In her October-November 1942 refit, Tromp received types 272 and 286 radars in place of the older 
Type 79 radar. In October 1943, Tromp received two more 3-inch anti-aircraft guns. In her October 1944 through February 1945 refit, Tromp exchanged her original torpedo tubes for British ones that could fire British torpedoes, reloads of the Dutch ones being unavailable. She also received SC and SG radars in exchange for the Types 272 and 286 radar. Trump was in the East Indies in May 1940 and mostly stayed there even after Japan entered the war in December 1941. On February 4, 1942, she took part in the Battle of Makassar Strait but wasn't damaged. On February 15th, the force was attacked by bomb-loaded Cates from the carrier Ryujo, but no hits were scored. On February 19th, she took part in the Battle of Badung Strait, but not only wasn't able to stop the invasion of Bali, but was also moderately damaged by 11 hits, sending her to Australia for repairs and likely saving her from being sunk at the Battle of the Java Sea. With repairs and modifications completed at the start of May 1942, she helped a torpedoed Russian steamer near Sydney in the middle of the month. For most of the rest of 1942, she mostly escorted convoys to and from New Guinea and generally around the greater Australian East Coast area. This was followed by a refit from mid-October to late November. In February 1943, she escorted a large inbound troop convoy bringing Australian troops home. Most of mid-1943 was spent back on convoy duty until in October again going in for a refit. In January 1944, she joined the British Eastern Fleet in Sri Lanka. In April through September 1944, she escorted the British Eastern Fleet as they attacked Japanese position in the East Indies. These included the April Operation Cockpit, the May Operation Transom, and the July Operation Crimson. In September, she returned to Australia for a refit that lasted until February 1945. With that complete, she joined the British East Indies Fleet and spent March through May 1945 supporting the British liberation of Burma, the Andaman Islands, and the Nicobar Islands. In June 1945, through the end of the war, she took part in the liberation of Bollock Poppin and the rest of the East Indies. She was finally sold for scrap in 1969. Hemskirk, still under construction, left the Netherlands May 10, 1940, with pretty much just her engines working, and headed for England. In June of 1940, with pretty much just her light anti-aircraft guns fitted, she escorted Sumatra, which was taking the royal family to Canada and back. Afterwards, she went in for conversion completion as an anti-aircraft cruiser. Finally completed February 11, 1941, she began escorting Atlantic convoys until January 1942 when she headed for the East Indies. She was sailing through the Indian Ocean at the end of February 1942 when the East Indies fell, so she headed back to Sri Lanka. In April 1942, while the Japanese were raiding the Indian Ocean, she was with the Far East Fleet at sea trying to figure out how to get to the Japanese carriers without getting slaughtered. In May and June 1942, she was in Simonstown, South Africa, getting a refit and repairing storm damage. In the third quarter of 1942, she first covered a fake invasion of Sumatra to divert attention away from the Solomons, then covered a raid on the unconquered part of Madagascar. In the fourth quarter of 1942, she went back to convoy escort duty, mostly in the Indian Ocean. In February 1943, she escorted a large inbound troop convoy bringing Australian troops home. In the first half of 1944, she escorted convoys through the Mediterranean, finally returning to England in mid-June for an overhaul. She would remain there for the rest of the European War and was the first Netherlands ship to re-enter a home port in July 1945. She was finally sold for scrap in 1970.